This is Radio Nepal. I'm Kaushal Kemire with the news. The headlines first. Foreign Affairs Minister N.P. South leaves for Israel to bring back Nepalese facing difficulty in the wake of Hamas attack. Parliamentary Committee endorses bill designed to amend money laundering related laws. Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan offers to mediate in Hamas-Israel conflict. And India defeat Afghanistan in the ongoing ICC ODI World Cup. Now the news in detail. Foreign Affairs Minister N.P. South has left for Israel to bring back the Nepalese facing difficulty there in the wake of Hamas attack. A Nepal Airlines wide-body jet with a capacity of 250 seats has flown to Israel for the rescue. The Nepali embassy in Israel will facilitate the return of the Nepalese with the flights from Israel. So far, more than 350 Nepalese have registered for safe relocation and Nepal return. Among them, 288 were willing to return home. Currently, there are 265 Nepali students engaged in the Learn and Earn program in Israel. Among them, 129 are from Agriculture University, 97 from Trivan University and 49 from Sudhir Paschim University. Among 49 from Sudhir Paschim University, 17 students were at Kibbutz Elu Mim, the southern belt of Israel. Four students injured in the attack are receiving treatment. The government has requested the Israeli government to provide treatment to the injured Nepalese. The ministry has made it clear that it will take time to bring the lifeless bodies of those killed in the Hamas attack due to the legal process of handover. The deceased bodies are kept in the safe place under the protection of the Israeli government. Meanwhile, the government of Nepal has decided to bear the plain fare of Nepalese willing to return home from Israel. The Law, Justice and Human Rights Committee of the House of Representatives has endorsed a bill designed to amend some laws related to the prevention of money laundering and promotion of business environment. The committee meeting held yesterday discussed and passed the report about the bill submitted by a subcommittee. The subcommittee had submitted its report to the main committee on Tuesday. Chief Commissioner of the Commission for the Investigation of Abuse of Authority, Prem Kumar Rai, has stressed the need for revising the existing laws related to the Commission. Putting his views on the bill designed to amend the Commission for the Investigation of Abuse of Authority Act at the State Affairs and Good Governance Committee of the Parliament yesterday, Chief Commissioner Rai said the Act needed revision to ease procedure of the Commission. He added that the existing laws had hindered the CIAA to work smoothly. Likewise, Minister for Communication and Information Technology Rekha Sharma said the government was committed to maintaining rule of law. She added that each and every individual should begin the effort to curb corruption as the mere work of the CIAA would not be sufficient. President Ramchandra Paudel has stressed the need for investment in the field of technology. Inaugurating the Nepal Technology Innovation Center building of Kathmandu University in Thulikhil of Kabri Palanchuk yesterday, the president said it was necessary to make the future generation technology friendly and competitive in the world market. He added that Nepal had not progressed as expected due to lack of sufficient investment in the technology sector. Nepal and Germany yesterday signed a joint declaration of intent on the skills, labor, migration and knowledge exchange at the Federal Ministry of Labor and Social Affairs of Germany. Ambassador of Nepal to Germany, Ram Kaji Kharka and Michael von der Kamen, director of International Affairs of German Federal Employment Agency signed the joint declaration on intent on behalf of their respective governments. The Public Accounts Committee under the Federal Parliament has held a discussion with Chief Secretary, General Secretary of Parliament, Acting Auditor General and officials from different ministries on why auditing on areas was not conducted for a long time. 
Committee Chair. Rishikesh Pokhrel said that the auditing process for clearing areas had begun as per the recommendation of the 60th Annual Report of the Audit Office of the Auditor General. The committee meeting directed the concerned ministries to send the updated documents on areas for auditing. Minister for Women, Children and Senior Citizens Surendra Rajacharya has stressed the need for cooperation and collaboration among the three tier of governments for the improvement of child rights. In his address to a program organized by the National Child Rights Council marking the International Day of Girl Child in Kathmandu yesterday, Minister Rijal pledged more investment in the promotion of child rights to address pressing issues in the relevant sector. He urged the three tier government and non government organizations to implement the Convention on the Rights of the Child, National Act and Rules, and the policies about child rights. You're listening to Radio Nepal's ATM English News Bulletin. Now on to some international updates. The death toll in Israel from Hamas attack has reached 1,200, with more than 1,000 people have been killed by Israeli airstrikes on Gaza. Gaza's only power station has run out of fuel, forcing hospitals to rely on their emergency generators. The BBC quoted authorities in Gaza as saying the emergency generators will only last for two to four days. Earlier this week, Israel announced it was cutting supplies of electricity, fuel and water. Meanwhile, Turkish President Rashid Tayyip Erdogan has offered to mediate in the Hamas-Israel conflict. The Turkish-based news agency quoted leader Erdogan as saying Turkey was ready for any kind of mediation, including prisoner exchanges, if the parties requested it. Meanwhile, U.S. President Joe Biden has promised rock-solid and unwavering support for Israel following Hamas's attack on Saturday. Washington has ordered the movement of military ships and aircraft closer to Israel as a show of support. Likewise, the UK Foreign Office has said the British Foreign Secretary James Cleverly has travelled to Israel to show solidarity with the Israeli people. The British top diplomat's visit comes as the US Secretary of State Antony Blinken announced he would also go to Israel on Thursday. Now a sports update. Host India have defeated Afghanistan by eight wickets in the ongoing ICC Men's ODI World Cup. Afghanistan had made 272 runs for the loss of eight wickets in the allocated 50 overs after winning the toss and batting first. India achieved the target with the loss of just two wickets in 35 overs to win the match. Now the general weather forecast for the country for today. According to the Meteorological Forecasting Division, the weather will be partly cloudy in Kosi Province, Madhis Province, Bagmati Province and Gandhiki Province, and mainly fair in the rest of the country. Light rain or thunder and lightning is likely to occur at a few places of Kosi Province and at one or two places of Madhis Province, Bagmati Province and Gandhiki Province. With this, we have almost come to the end of this news bulletin. But before wrapping up, let's have the reminder of the headlines once again. Foreign Affairs Minister N.P. South leaves for Israel to bring back citizens facing difficulty in wake of Hamas attack. Parliamentary Committee endorses bill designed to amend money laundering related laws. Turkish President Rashid Tayyip Erdogan offers to mediate in the Hamas-Israel conflict and, Israel and India defeat Afghanistan in the ongoing ICC ODI World Cup. Well, that's all the news we have for this bulletin. Our next bulletin in English will be at 2 in the afternoon. You can also listen to us online at our website www.onlineradionepal.gov.np. Keep listening to Radio Nepal and have a good day.